Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome back to another video in the Fly-by-Wire A380X here in Microsoft Flight Simulator. In today's tutorial video, we are going to be look at performing a non-precision approach in the A380. Now, in the real world, a non-precision approach would be flown using the FLS system. Now, the FLS system is the FMS, the Flight Management System, landing system that the A380 has, and also some A320 aircraft have it as well. This basically creates a virtual glide slope and localizer for the aircraft to follow when none exists in real life or when one does exist but for some reason is inoperative because it's down for maintenance. Now at the moment the fly-by-wire team have not got the FLS system incorporated into their A380 so if you are wanting to land at an airport that doesn't have an ILS system then you're going to have to fly a different kind of approach and it's that approach that we are going to be looking at today. Essentially we're going to be looking at RMP and RNAV approaches and how we can fly those with the tools we've got at our disposal in the A380 at the moment and that means using the track FPA mode or more accurately the NAV FPA mode. Now, if you were flying an RNP or RNAV approach in the A320, for example, you would use the final approach mode. Well, the A380 doesn't have the final approach mode, so we're going to have to manipulate it ourselves a little bit, which is certainly safe to do as long as you use the correct minimums. And there are times as well when this has to be done because final approach mode cannot be used in certain circumstances, for instance, when the temperatures are really low. So today I'm going to take you through flying a RMP approach into Manchester on runway 23 left. This runway doesn't have an ILS. In real life, the FLS system on the A380 would create a virtual localizer and glide slope for the aircraft to fly. But as this is not yet implemented, let's see how we're going to do it instead. All right then, so we are currently sat in the hold over the Waypoint Dane. We've got Manchester Airport just behind us. And in today's demonstration, we are going to be landing on runway 23 left. Now, runway 23 left doesn't have an ILS system. It doesn't actually uh, get used that often for landings at Manchester for that reason. But when they're doing maintenance on 23 right, aircraft will have to land 23 left and we're okay to take the A380 in there as well because right at the end of this runway there is a taxiway little loop there so we can turn the aircraft around we've got our brake to vacate already set up look to vacate at whiskey one so how are we going to land then on 23 left well yes it's going to have to be a RNAV landing because the FLS system in the A380X from Flyby isn't yet operational. So if we have a look then at the chart, let's talk through how we're actually going to do this. So it's an RMP uh, arrival. Let's just bring that up. And we will begin our uh, RMP approach at the waypoint Osnap, as the Dane holding point we're currently circling is just over here somewhere. So as we have a look at the chart, we can see that we have a mandatory altitude of three and a half thousand feet that ideally we want to be at by the time we get to uh, Charlie 23 Lima, India, just here. And then the important bit is right here at waypoint Charlie 23 Lima Foxtrot. That is the point where our aircraft needs to start descending down a three degree flight path all the way down towards our runway. Now at this point I must point out that you cannot auto land with an RNP approach. The whole point of the RNAV RNP approaches is to get your aircraft down below the cloud layer so that you can perform a visual landing. Autopilot will not be used in order to uh, land our aircraft. The next things we need to look at then are the minimums for this approach. Now, final approach mode is something that those of you used to flying the Airbus A320 or A330 will be very used to. Now, final approach mode doesn't exist 
on this aircraft, the A380, which means that we won't be using the LNAV VNAV minimums, which you would use if you were using a final approach mode. We've only got lateral navigation, which we'll see a little bit later on. The vertical part of our navigation is going to be controlled by us, the pilot setting up the autopilot to fly a three degree descent. And because of that, we're going to be using the LNAV minimums, which means our decision altitude is going to be 680 feet. Okay then, so down on our approach page, we fill in all the weather, we pop in those minimums of 680 feet. If we just have a quick look at the current weather at Manchester, we've got visibility of 6,000 meters, the minimums for our approach, runway visual range is 1,400 meters, so that's fine, legal to, uh, to start the approach. We've got a ceiling then of 900 feet, and our minimums are 680 feet. So we do stand a good chance of obviously breaking out of the ceiling with a couple of hundred feet to go and then at that point we should be able to see the runway autopilot will be off and then we'll bring her in for a manual landing the QNH is 1022 and this is incredibly important when you're performing a RNAV RNP approach so we must make sure that we will have the correct altimeter set on the instruments because if you don't then what will happen is we will begin this descent not at 3,500 feet, but the wrong altitude. And if the pressure setting you've got set means that you're actually flying lower than what you think, well, you can work out yourself what would happen in those instances. And sadly, has happened in real life. So now we are going to start our descent at the moment. We're at uh, flight level 80. Let's tell the aircraft to start descending down to 4,000 feet. Thrust idle, open descent, and we want to pop in the uh, local QNH, which we've just seen as 1022. So there we go, just confirming thrust idle, open descent, 4,000 blue. Local QNH is set. At this point, then you'd run the approach checklist. So the bar of QNH is 1022. Seatbelt signs are on. Uh, minimums are 680 set. We have got auto brake set to brake to vacate, and uh, any EFB, etc., will be stowed. Once we're ready to leave the holding point at Dane, best way to do that is on our flight plan page. We can just tell the aircraft to fly direct to, uh, to OSNAP, which would be done by selecting this and then from present position, go direct to, and we can then press insert. And the aircraft is now flying directly towards OSNAP, which is the first part of our RNP approach. Okay, so the aircraft now, we have activated the approach phase, we're in managed speed, and we have just set flaps one, flying now at S speed. We're going to reduce this to 3,500 feet, which, uh, as you recall, is our platform altitude. And we can see at the current sort of descent rate, this is where we are going to be leveling off, which is pretty much where we want it to. If, of course, we wanted to uh, get down a little bit sooner, well then, we do have spoilers at our disposal if you're finding yourself a little bit on the uh, high side. So I have just extended the spoilers for a minute and uh, we'll then see the level off arrow come a little bit closer, giving us just a fraction more time to play with and slow our large aircraft down. So what is going to happen when we actually pick up the uh, final track lined up with the runway, which is down here? So we will pop our aircraft into the track FPA mode, which means the aircraft will continue to fly with the autopilot on. It will fly the nav track that we've got down here. But what we need to do is tell the aircraft to descend at a flight path angle of three degrees. If we just bring that uh, chart back up, we can confirm that three degree chart just here. 
and the point at which we tell the aircraft to fly a three degree descent angle is 0.3 miles before reaching Charlie 23 Lima Fox. So you would pull this at 0.3 miles prior to the descent point. Okay, so as you can see now, we are effectively turning the uh, the base leg. Let's get flaps two out. And we can pull speed just to maintain Y0 knots for the moment. 2,500. And then all we are waiting for, because as you can see, we have already nice leveled off at three and a half thousand feet. When we are 0 0.3 miles away from this fix here, which will be indicated up here at the moment, you can see we're 2.7 miles away from this fix. But when we are 0 0.3 miles away from this fix, we are going to activate that three degree descent. So let's now pop the aircraft into our track FPA mode, which we've done. We'll activate that descent then by turning this, setting the three degree flight path angle, and then we will pull this when we are 0 0.3 miles away from this waypoint. So the aircraft is now just starting to turn. We've got the bird on as well. This comes on automatically when you turn on uh, the FPA mode. And we are currently 2.9 miles away. So it's now just a monitoring and waiting game before beginning that descent. We've obviously got rad out calls uh, that you can hear at the moment, the terrain beneath us as we're uh, passing over the Pennine Hills. And obviously at the moment, today's weather, there's quite a thick layer of cloud above Manchester, meaning we can't see the runway. So this non-precision approach technique is what's going to get us underneath that cloud layer so we can see the runway and bring her in for a manual landing. We're about 10 miles away from uh, the airport, Mike Charlie Tango. So here we go, look. There we can see we've got 0 0.8 miles, 0 0.7. Uh, pull, wound that in a little bit too early because it's disappeared. Let's just rewind that back in again. And it's at 0 0.4, 0 0.3. There we go. And we're going to pause. So FPA 3 degrees. The aircraft will now start heading down. We can push for managed speed as well. Start slowing our aircraft down. We can get the landing gear down. Spoilers armed. Go flaps three, speed's checked. Flaps three. And what you will then be doing is having a look and cross-referencing the distance here with your altitude. So we are coming up to eight miles from uh, runway two, three left, and at eight miles, we should be 2,820 feet. So 2,860 feet. So we are about 40 feet too high at the moment. You can then manipulate this just a little bit to get that on track. So we've now just set 3.1. You've also got, for a little bit of assistance, you've got the little green yo-yo to help you there as well. This is where having two pilots in the flight deck is really useful because you've obviously got one monitoring, then you as pilot flying is monitoring these systems as well. So coming up to six miles, 2,190. Flaps full. Six miles, 2,200. 190, yeah, so we're, we're pretty much there now. Minimums, remember, was 680 feet. We're just starting to see the ground, but we're still in that lane of cloud at the moment. Of course, I've not done it, but should we need to go around, it's pretty straightforward. It is just straight out, and the missed approach altitude is 3,500 feet, which we've already got set. We're now going to pop that back to three degrees. 
because we are now on track let's double check four miles we should be at 1550 that's four miles or a fraction under so again we can just manipulate that to 2.9 But we're all prepared for landing. Flaps are uh, down, gears down. We're stabilised for the approach. It's just a case now of 1, hoping to see that runway. So the minimums are coming up. Above. There's the car park, and now we can see the runway lights. So with that, autopilot off. And we bring her in for a manual landing. With the A320 family, when you're in track FPA mode and autopilot is off, you must also turn off the flight directors. I'm not sure if this is a requirement also of the Airbus A380. Any real world pilots will be able to let us know about that in the comments, I'm sure. But that then is essentially how you fly RNAV and RNP approaches in the Airbus A380X from the Fly-by-Wire team, at least until the FLS system has been implemented. One final note, you can not fly RNPAR approaches using this technique and Airbus A380s tend not to fly those anyway because they are for usually quite complicated approaches near very close terrain, the kinds of which you'd see in the Greek islands and Funchal for example, not the kinds of places that A380s tend to fly. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you have found this helpful. Let me know in the comments down below if this has worked for you and how you are enjoying the A380 at the moment. Literally hundreds, thousands of you enjoying and flying this aircraft around the world. Would love to hear how you're getting on with it. A recent update as well also meant that performance on the aircraft has increased from the Fly-by-Wire team. Great to see it already being updated following its initial release. Thank you so much for watching. If you have found the video useful, please don't forget to leave a like. And of course, if you are new to our channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any of our future videos and of course, our live stream flights. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you all again in the next one. Bye bye for now.